Part 1 Chapter 1 Understanding Infidelity Infidelity is not a rare occurrence. Statistics demonstrate that 55% of adults have committed infidelity at some point. The question is, what preceded the infidelity? Can marriage or relationships survive infidelity, even when both partners want to reconcile? Can infidelity be forgiven? Is it possible to continue a life together? Infidelity has its roots in many different factors, both in the relationship and on the personal plane. There is always a warning, a sense that something is wrong, but that doesn't justify the infidelity. There are always problems that precede the cheating. So, the most common problems that precede infidelity are all very similar. However, the first thing you will notice is the absence of a strong emotional connection. That connection may never have existed or, alternatively, collapsed over time because the couple paid insufficient attention to their differences or to the problems in their relationship. Infidelity is often a symptom of repressed dissatisfaction, unresolved conflicts, lack of communication, lack of passion, misunderstanding, and the tenderness or love they don't receive in the relationship or the marriage. This is the first problem. If something is bothering your partner, the honest and preferred course of action is to talk about that problem. Infidelity is not an option. The partner who chose to cheat reflexively places the fault on their partner. This, of course, is at least an acknowledgement that someone is being hurt. While most people have the opportunity to cheat, they overcome that urge, knowing that they will live with that truth for the rest of their life. Imagine having kids and cheating your partner. How will that affect them? Ultimately, the children suffer because someone decides to be selfish. Does that seem right to you? Of course not. It cannot be right. That is an example of pure selfishness. Do you understand the thought process of a person prone to infidelity? Infidelity also is often a consequence of the loss of self-esteem or a symptom of entering into a midlife crisis or the result of a partner questioning the details of their past life, including work, career, and marriage. When the infidelity is revealed, the trust disappears, weakening the emotional and sexual attachment of the partner. Disbelief and the shock of discovery are universal reactions. Sadness, depression, feelings of negative self-worth, and intense anger toward the partner who committed infidelity are typical feelings that accompany such a crisis. Even those who have had doubts become distraught when their worst fears are realized. At the moment of discovery, each partner reacts strongly, yet differently. In the first days and weeks, both are overwhelmed with feelings of tremendous loss, guilt, and shame. A cheated partner may react with tears, even rage. The situation may manifest in physical reactions, such as nausea, headaches, sleeping, and eating problems. On the other hand, the partner who has committed the infidelity often has a feeling of shame and remorse for what has been done and a fear that the cheated partner will not forgive them. The injured partner has lost the positive image of their life partner and the belief in a secure, committed relationship. The partner who has committed infidelity has lost their secret love and also faces the potential of the marriage or the relationship. Who is to blame here? We are not animals. We must resist this urge at any cost. It is very simple. When you love someone, you don't hurt them. Once again, I will make this point. There is no justification for infidelity. If something doesn't suit you, leave the relationship. You will end things in a humane and proper way. Otherwise, you are nothing but a coward. As I said, every relationship is a highway. If you don't like it, take the next exit. 
A person experiencing infidelity has lost trust in their partner and they want to be reassured that their relationship with the third party will terminate. They want answers to questions regarding that relationship. A person has a long memory when it comes to a partner that had a love affair, that lied, that concealed infidelity, and they often visualize the details of the sexual relationship of the unfaithful partner. The partner who has committed infidelity can respond with complete honesty or with silence because they are ashamed and don't want to hurt their partner further. Whether or not reconciliation will occur depends on several factors. The most important being, one, the motivation to preserve the marriage or relationship. Two, the willingness to communicate honestly and solve problems. Three, the willingness to apologize and repent. And four, the willingness to change, which sadly is not always possible. That is the simple truth. So stop blaming yourself. Remember that the other party always had another option available. 1.1. You must know this as well. Infidelity does not mean that the relationship or marriage is doomed. Although infidelity is one of the most difficult experiences of a loving life, it is possible to recover and develop a relationship with greater trust, increased commitment, and deeper love. Couples can learn to successfully rebuild their relationship and make their relationship even stronger. Forgiveness is a difficult process, both individually and collectively. It takes work on both the personal and the partnership level to regain that lost confidence. And it requires both partners to exhibit a lot of patience. 1.2. What is essential? To begin this process, the transgressing partner must completely seize contact with the third party and notify the deceived partner of any attempt by the third party to contact them. Honesty and loyalty will help to restore confidence in the relationship. In practice, it is useful for the deceived partner to know, in detail, the daily obligations and schedule of the unfaithful partner. This will remove all doubts regarding how the transgressing partner is spending their time. Serious conversations in which the reasons for forgiveness should be repeated and reinforced, and expressing sincere repentance for what has happened are obligatory. The apology of the partner who committed the infidelity must be sincere and must include an acceptance of personal responsibility for the infidelity. Taking responsibility for your role is also very important to the process. This does not mean that both partners should bear equal responsibility for infidelity, but rather identify the factors that influence those events so that they can prevent a similar occurrence in the future. The best way to prevent infidelity is by constantly investing the time necessary to ensure the foundations of a marriage or relationship. 1.3. How serious is infidelity? Apart from illness and death, nothing but infidelity creates such tremendous suffering, no matter how much time passes, perhaps as long as the marriage itself. There will still be difficulties in understanding why it happened. Why? How? We spin in circles. This is not a healthy, ever. People respond in varied ways to the mention of infidelity, from bitter condemnation to resigned acceptance to excitement and even approval. Infidelity may be ubiquitous, but how it is to understand depends on the time and place of the drama. In the modern world, the love affair is primarily experienced through the damage it causes. It is always viewed through the lens of agony and the suffering caused by betrayal. The agony is that infidelity is not only causes of lost confidence, but also the collapse of the high expectations of romantic love. It is a shock that makes you question your past, your future, and your identity. The swirling emotions that emerge from the discovery of an affair can so overwhelm that psychologists associate it with the symptoms of trauma, obsessive negative thoughts, excessive anxiety, numbness, alienation, unexplained anger, 
and an uncontrollable panic. The damage inflicted on his deceived partner is only one side of the story. Modern culture is much more sympathetic to injured partners, but not enough attention is paid to the meaning and motives of the affair, and what we can learn from it. The affair can teach us a lot about relationships or marriage, what we expect, what we think what we want, and what rights we think we have. They reveal our personal and cultural views on love, lust, and commitment views that have changed dramatically over the past 100 years. Once again, if love exists, infidelity is definitely not an option. 1.4. What is crucial? We still want everything that the traditional family is supposed to provide. Security, reputation, property, and children. But now we also want our partner to love, want, and be interested in us. We should be the best of friends and passionate lovers. We want our loved ones to offer us stability, security, predictability, and reliability. And we want it to last. What is the point of the story if your partner doesn't have the same perception of love? It's like trying to play a note on an old piano. You can hit the chords, but you will hear no music. The hammer is hitting a string that doesn't exist. 1.5. What is the point of everything? At weddings, vows are made and oaths to eternal love are sworn. Infidelity should never happen in the case of true love because all the reasons for it has been removed. And a perfect balance of freedom and a sense of security is achieved. But infidelity happens in good marriages and in bad. The freedom to leave the relationship or to divorce does not make the infidelity obsolete. Since it is impossible to leave, why do people cheat? 1.6. And why do happy people cheat? Old wisdom would say that adultery occurs when something is missing in the relationship or marriage. Because if you have everything you need at home, as modern marriage promises, you should have no reason to go anywhere else to find happiness. Infidelity is a symptom of a failed relationship. So whatever the problem is, if you love someone, there are always two paths. The right path and the wrong path. 1.7 Is infidelity in any way justified? Theoretically, we all know that infidelity is immoral. However, there are situations where certain people will consider adultery to be justified, assuming that they are not the ones who are deceived, but it is very difficult to justify such an act. Infidelity is a betrayal of a loved one's trust. More than a betrayal of trust, it is a betrayal of mutual respect. In principle, infidelity is a symptom of a pre-existing problem, but that hardly justifies it. You see where I'm going with this? For example, a woman might consider infidelity as okay when a woman cheats on a man that is tormenting her, especially if he cheated on her first. A man who cheats on his wife and gets away with it may be considered by other like-minded men to be a hero of sorts. This is an example of pure hypocrisy. Another example is when one of the partners refuses to have sex for some reason or for no reason at all. After all, the partner being denied has to do something about their natural needs. Really, trying to solve this problem with a loved one and or complaining is not considered an acceptable way to meet those needs. 1.8. And what is the real justification? The real justification doesn't exist. People cheat out of selfishness because at that moment, they are satisfying their own needs for sex, for attention, for feeding their ego, which in the moment is more important than the fact it will be hurtful to their loved one. It is also possible that they feel justified engaging in the infidelity because of some perceived hurt, but this is not a valid excuse. If the relationship no longer works, it is better to end it than to cheat. If there is no sex in the relationship and one does not want to end the relationship, 
then those needs must go unfulfilled, thus avoiding harm to the person you are in a relationship with. The shortest answer to the question of when infidelity justified would be, never. There are other ways to deal with the problem that do not involve a betrayal of trust.